Hello, and welcome to the Corel Draw video tour. I'm Susan Wimmer, and I'll be taking you on a step-by-step -step tour of Corel Draw. Before we get started, you may want to set your VCR counter to zero so you can use the counter index included in the package. I'd also like to take this opportunity to remind you to register your copy of Corel Draw. By doing so, you'll be eligible to receive upgrade information, free hotline support, and you'll be eligible to enter the Corel Draw Million Dollar Design Contest held every year. Corel Draw is the most comprehensive graphics package on the market today. Inside the box, you'll find six different applications, fonts, clip art, even a bonus CD with thousands of extra clip art images, animated files, and more. In this video, I'll cover the four main applications in the Corel Draw box Corel Draw, Corel Chart, Corel Photo Paint, and Corel Show. Now, we've got a lot of territory to cover, so let's get started. Corel Draw is the centerpiece of our suite of applications. It's the most powerful vector illustration software on the market today. Yet, as you'll see in the next few minutes, it's very easy to learn and use. From the Windows Program Manager, when you're ready to launch Corel Draw 3, simply double click on the icon. When you first open Corel Draw, this is the screen you'll be seeing. At the top is our program name, Corel Draw. This bar is the menu bar, and as you can see, I can access a lot of different functions just by clicking and dragging through the different menu options. Next is our status bar. And as we get some objects down on the screen, you'll see a lot of information giving you feedback on those options. Next is our ruler, and here's our drawing page. Down at the bottom of the screen, Corel Draw has given you an on-screen color palette for setting the colors of your objects. Here to the left are the Corel Draw tools, and we'll spend the next few minutes reviewing each of these tools and how they work. The first two tools in the toolbar are for selection and editing. First, we have the pick tool, then the node edit tool. Next we have the zoom tool. There's a fly out here which gives you a lot of control over zoom. The next four tools are for drawing objects and let's put some objects down on the screen. The first is the freehand drawing tool. I just click on the tool and go over and draw on the page. It's just like dragging a pencil along paper. You just drag your line and Corel Draw will create smooth lines for you. If you would prefer to work with Bezier drawing, you just depress the tool for just a moment, a fly-up will appear, and you can switch to Bezier drawing. Bezier drawing is like connect the dots. You just click, click, and click, and Corel Draw will join the lines for you. The next tool I'll show you is for rectangles or squares. I can draw them of any size simply by dragging on the screen. And here's an important concept that you'll use throughout Corel Draw. If you hold down the control key while you're performing an operation, it will constrain the operation. Here I'm holding down the control key, and as you can see, I have a perfect square. If I release the control key, I'll get a rectangle of any shape. The same goes for the ellipse tool or circle tool. I can draw an ellipse of any size or shape, but if I hold down the control key, I'm going to get a perfect circle. I'm going to use the pick tool and simply by selecting the object and then deleting it, I'm going to get some room on the page. Let's get some text down on the page as well. I'll select the text tool and simply click where I'd like my headline text to appear. Corel Draw has text right on screen, so I'll just type in the word text, and by selecting the object, resize it. I'll move this up a little bit. The last two tools in the Corel Draw toolbar are for fill and outline, and we'll review these in a few minutes. But first, let's go back to the pick tool and learn a little bit more about selecting and editing your objects. As you can see, to select an object, I merely clicked on it and a bounding box appeared. To select an object, you just click on it and a bounding box will appear. If I double click on an object, in this case a second click, I'll enter the rotate and skew mode, and as you can see now, I get some arrows. I can just drag those arrows and the object will rotate. If I'd rather skew, I use the skew arrows on the side of the object. To fill an object, I select it and can simply go down to the Corel Draw color palette 
and select the color that I want. It's very easy to change colors once I have the object selected. I just go to the tool palette and select the color that I want. And let's give this circle a color as well. If I have an object filled with color, I can select it anywhere in the color range and move it easily just by dragging it to the new location. With the Corel Draw bounding box, from each corner, I can proportionally resize the object. From the side, I can stretch it to any shape. Now let's look a little bit at basic object editing with the Corel Draw Shape Tool. The Corel Draw Shape Tool works differently depending on the type of object you have on the screen. For a square, for example, or a rectangle, I can just drag from the nodes these little squares at each point, and it'll give me a rounded rectangle. For the ellipse or circle, the Shape Tool performs two functions. If I drag inside, it's going to give me a pie shape. If I drag with my mouse outside the ellipse, it's going to give me an arc that's no longer filled. Let's get a pie shape back. I'm going to use the Zoom Tool for a minute. Just marquee select the area that I want to zoom into. Let's look at the word test here. Select with the node tool. And as you can see, a node appears on each character. I can select an individual character by simply clicking on the node, and it gives me feedback that it's highlighted by going dark. At this point, any changes that I make will affect just this letter E. For example, I can color that individual character. I can move that individual character off the baseline. I can move characters along the baseline, and if you remember the control key, you'll know that in this case, it will constrain that character along the baseline if you hold the control key while you're dragging. And I can even double click and change, in fact, the font for that character. The shape tool, therefore, controls the individual aspects of the object, whereas the pick tool relates to size, placement, skew, or rotation. I'll use the zoom tool again. In this case, I'm going to zoom to the entire page. That's what this icon is for. And let's see how we're doing. Now that we have some basic objects up on the page, I can give you a little bit more detail about fill and outline. I'm going to put down one more straight line. Corel Draw has lots of power for the artist in you, and that includes the power to control the outline of your objects. Over here in the outline flyout, you'll see a lot of different settings, including no outline, hairline, different widths. We've given you some quick settings for black and white. And right here is the Corel Draw roll up. Now, I want to talk about roll ups for just a minute, because this is a great way to apply a lot of different special effects to your objects. Corel Draw roll ups give you a lot of power at your fingertips but it doesn't clutter up the screen. There's a little arrow up here in the upper right corner, and if you click on that arrow, as you can see, all the features go away temporarily, but they aren't gone for good because I can just click on that arrow again and bring them right down where I can work with them. This way you don't clutter up your screen, and yet you have power at your fingertips. Let's work with this object we've created, this, the line, and we'll apply some different outline settings. The first area here allows me to set a different thickness, and as you can see, I'm just scrolling up to give the line a big thickness. I'll apply that down here with the Apply button. I can also use different arrows. All I have to do is click into the arrow setter, select an arrow for each end of the line, and as you can see, I can scroll down through lots of arrows that CorelDRAW includes in the package. We'll just give a simple one up here at the top. I can set whether I want a dotted or dashed line from the Quick Picker for these and even set the color of the line very quickly and easily. Let's hit Apply and see how our settings look. I'm going to roll up the pen window and do the same thing with a fill roll up. Only this time we're going to fill some objects. Let's select our rounded rectangle here and we'll go through the fill roll up step by step. The first area that we'll look at is an alternative way to set solid color. Very quick and easy. It works just like the on-screen palette at the bottom of the screen. The second section I have is for fountain fills, and this is a very easy way to set fountain fills for your objects. In this preview window right here, you can set the angle of the fountain fill just by clicking where you want the fountain fill to go. 
You can also drag if you want a specific angle and just want to test different settings. If you're happy with the angle, you can set the color for your fountain fill by using this quick color selecting item. For example, I'll go from a nice bright purple to a blue, and I can apply that to my object. And as you can see, it's applied very quickly. In this area as well, I can switch from a linear fountain fill to a radial fountain fill, where it flows from the outside of the object to the inside of the object. And in this case, if I click inside the window, I'm changing the center offset of the fill. And again, I can just drag that to any position I want. Let's apply that and see how it looks. The third area of the roll-up has to do with simple two-color fills. Now, I don't have a fill loaded here, so let's click on that window and select one of the many fills included in with Corel Draw. I'll scroll down here and show you that we really do have a lot of settings. You can create your own as well. I can set a foreground color and a background color. Let's do something simple like gray. And I can apply that to the object. Now, I may want to have this fill appear very large in the object, so I might want to change the tiling settings. Right on screen, you see something has changed. I've got two little boxes that I can play with to enlarge the tile and even change the offset of the second tile just by moving this box around. Once I'm happy with how the tile will appear, I can press the Apply button and the change will take effect. So as you can see, I changed both the size and the placement of those tiles. The fourth setting I have in the fill roll-up is for full color fills. And this is great for either using the Corel Draw fills included or bringing in files from any other application. Here you can see we give you some quick settings. Let's pick a colorful one here. And we can apply that to the object simply. And again, tiling works the same way. I can just change my tiling interactively right on screen to get it to be the same size or placement. Once I'm happy with the fill in the outline of the object, I can move on to special effects in Corel Draw. And at this point, I may want to arrange my roll-ups to keep my workspace clean. Over here to the left of the title bar of the roll-up, you'll see we have a bit of a menu. This allows you to roll up using the menus or arrange the roll-ups. If you arrange a single roll-up, it will tuck itself up neatly in the corner of the window. If you use Arrange All, it's going to arrange all of the roll-ups that you have displayed. And we'll work through this a little bit as we get more roll-ups up on the screen. The next area that I want to show you is using some simple special effects with Corel Draw. Let's go up under the Effects menu and call up the Blend Roll-up and the Extrude Roll-up, which we'll use in a few minutes. And here's a great opportunity to use my Arrange All function to neaten up my screen. And at this point, too, I'm going to get a new file so we have a clean page to work with. The first I'm going to show you is the Corel Draw feature Blend. And what I need to do is create two simple objects. I'll just go from a rectangle to a circle. By selecting both of these objects, either by marquee selecting or dragging around them, or by clicking on one object, then shift clicking on the other, I have two objects selected and at that point I can apply the blend. Here in the blend dialog, you'll see that we can select whether we want steps or spacing and the number of steps that we want, or other words, intermediate objects between these two. Let's just tap down to about 10 steps and hit the apply button and get a feel for what this feature can do for us. So as you can see, Corel Draw does all the work we create the intermediary objects between these two. I have a lot of settings that I can make here. One of my favorite is to switch to the color and go for a rainbow blend. Now, as you can see right here, I've given a visual display that I'm flowing from the red to the blue, and I flow directly from one color to the other. If I would prefer, I can give a rainbow fill and either go clockwise or counterclockwise, and in this case, I'm taking the long way around the color wheel to give some dynamic coloring effects. This looks like this will give us a nice effect. Let's hit the Apply button and see what happens. As you can see, we've given a rainbow fill from one object to the other. 
If you're not happy with the shape of your blend, that's perfectly okay because Corel Draw gives you total control over the shape. With the pick tool, I can select one of my source objects and resize it, and it will automatically reblend. I can also use my shape tool and actually reshape the object, and the blend will flow to that new shape. So as you can see, you can make all the standard modifications to either source object at either end of the blend, and you'll see those changes take place within the blend itself. There's a further step that I want to show you with the blend. And to do so, I'm going to draw a simple line, use my pick tool, make sure I've selected my blend object, and then using this tool right here, I'm going to select a new path, which is this line I've drawn. By hitting the apply button, you're going to see something very exciting happening here. We're able to attach the blend you've created along a path. This is a wonderful and very powerful feature. By selecting the path with my shape tool, I can move it, change the shape in any way, just by working with the control handles, edit the line, and the blend will automatically reflow around that shape. I'm going to delete this blend group. I'll marquee select, make sure I get the whole area, and then just hit my delete key. And let's roll up the blend dialog. Put down another simple shape. We'll color it magenta this time and take a look at the extrude feature. With Corel Draw's extrude feature, you're actually able to manipulate objects in 3D space. And while that might sound a little intimidating, it actually isn't. It's very easy to do. I'm just going to hit the edit button and something different has happened on screen. I have a little X here that I can drag and once I stop, the object is going to actually be created in 3D space. Here in the extrude roll-up, we have control over four different aspects of your 3D object. First, the shape, and that's what we're playing with now, just by moving the vanishing point around. We can change the shape of our object. I can control the depth of the extrusion simply by tapping the numbers up or down. I can make it a perspective extrusion or not. And I can extrude it to the front. In this case, we're extruding to the back, but I could also extrude it to the front to give an exciting bevel effect. The second aspect we can control with the extrude is the actual placement of this object in 3D space. All you have to do is tap on the buttons, and CorelDRAW does the work for you. You can rotate this object any way you like in 3D space and hit the Apply button to take a look at how it's going to appear. Very, very powerful function. And this, of course, works on any object. I'm just using a simple square here to show you how to do it. But this would work on text objects. Anything you create in Corel Draw can be extruded. If I'm unhappy with an extrusion, I can just hit the X in the center, and that'll take me back to where I started. The third aspect of extrude has to do with setting the lighting. I can turn my light switch on to say I'm going to use lighting and then just position the lighting anywhere I want just by clicking on one of the corners. You can see here I'm clicking and moving the X to the point for the light and I'm given a bit of a, an example of what my lighting is going to look like right here in the window. Let's see how this will look. I'll just apply this to our object. So you can see I have the light coming from this upper left corner so this side is bathed in darkness. The fourth aspect of the extrusion that I can affect has to do with whether or not I match the extrusion to the object fill. In this case, that's what I'm doing. In other words, I'm making the extrusion itself match the face object. I can use a solid fill of a different color. For example, I might want to go with the blue, and let's apply this and see how this appears. Or I can shade the object from front to back with any particular colors that I want to use. This is very powerful 3D manipulation and a lot of fun to use as well. Let me roll up the extrude dialog and I'm going to put some text down on screen and show you something that we're very excited about. Let's see, I'll just put the word top and also the word bottom and I'll resize these text objects proportionally by using the corners of my bounding boxes. I'm also going to draw a perfect circle, and I hope you remember that as I'm drawing an ellipse, if I just hold the control key down, 
I'll get a perfect circle. I'm going to show you how to perform text on a path very quickly and easily. Using my pick tool, I'm going to select the circle, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and also select the word top. At this point, you see my roll-up has changed a little bit. I have a little button here that helps me position my text on the path. Here's my circle, and you can see I can put my text along the top, the right side, along the bottom, or the left side. Well, since I've typed in the word top, we'll just go with the top. This drop-down menu here allows me to designate how I want the text to appear on the path. If I want it to follow the curve of the path, I just select that option. If I want it to be vertically skewed, giving me a bit of an orbit effect, I can select that option. I can also skew it horizontally, which will flatten the letters out. Or retain a vertical alignment, where my letters will remain upright even though they flow around the path. We'll just revert back to the letters flowing around the path and following the curve of the path. The second menu gives me the ability to set whether or not the text is aligned along the baseline, whether I give it a custom alignment, whether it's aligned to the ascender of the letter, or in other words, the topmost point in the text string, the descender, or the bottommost point, or whether the text is aligned in the center of the line. We'll just stick with the default alignment, where it'll default along the baseline of the text. And let's hit the Apply button and see what we're doing. As you can see, the letters flow perfectly along the line, and uh, they are following the curve of the path as well. Next, I'm going to select the circle again. This time, I'm going to hold the Shift key and select the word bottom and go through the same process. But this time, I want the text aligned to the bottom of the curve, and I want to place it on the inside so that it'll be upright and align it. Let's see, we'll go with a sender. As you can see, we have the text applied. I'll just move it up here to the center of the page. The text applied to the top and the bottom. To move this group around, I merely select the path, and the text will automatically come along with it. It's linked to that object, in fact. Now, we do give you a lot of control over this text along the path. We're going to select the Shape tool in order to get some control. I'll zoom in a bit. Just select the Zoom tool. Marquee select the area I'd like to see. And now let's select the word Top with our Shape tool. As you can see, the nodes appear just as we've seen them before. And in fact, all the control that I had earlier is still there. I can color individual characters, for example. But perhaps what's more important is my ability to adjust the placement of this text along the path. I'm going to marquee select the individual nodes. As you can see, I've selected the individual nodes of these three characters. And now, by simply dragging from any one of those nodes, I can move the text right along the path and give it a perfect alignment. I can do this as well with the bottom text. Let's zoom back out to our page. And I'm going to delete this object. Let's arrange our fit text to path roll up. And there's one more roll up I want to show you today. And this has to do with Corel Draw's ability to manage your drawings across many different layers. Now, although this looks like a single page, it can actually have a lot of layers so that you can control how your drawing is created and put perhaps complex images on one layers and separate uh, your drawing to fit your needs. We have an unlimited number of layers. To create a new layer, as you can see, I just clicked on this arrow to the right and I select New and I get into the Layer Options dialog. We give you some default names for layers. We keep track of them and count them for you, but you can also put your own layer name just by typing into this text entry box. Your layers can be visible or non-visible, printable or non-printable, locked, in other words, the objects won't move even if you try to, and we also give you the option to have color override where you display that layer only in a specific color. We'll take color override off for now. So I have two layers here that I'm going to draw on. I also have a guides layer and a grid layer. On my guides layer, I can pull guides across from the different CorelDRAW layer rulers, and in this case, any object that I draw will snap to those guides. 
Let's go to layer one and draw a couple of uh, simple objects here. And let's go to the layer I've named mine and draw a few more objects and see how layers work. For example, I could change the order of the layers just by dragging the name up or down. So I've moved layer one to the top of the list. Now I can move it back to the bottom of the list. In this case, I hope you noticed that the objects themselves changed position, moving to the front or the back. If I double click on the layer name, I can change these options, for example, making a layer invisible, so all of my objects on layer one are now invisible. They're still there, but I can't see them. This is a very helpful feature if you're going to draw a very complex drawing. It will speed the performance greatly. If you have a lot of different objects, you can spread them across a lot of different layers. This is just a first glimpse at all the power that Corel Draw can give to you. We do have a lot of different features, but the one that perhaps might be the most important to talk about right now is Corel Draw's online help. We do have extensive online help that's always just a click away. You can use your F1 hotkey to get to Corel Draw help contents. The tools are there, procedures, keyboard. We have uh, the commands, the screen, and even how to use help. So be sure to get familiar with the CorelDRAW help file and reach for it often if there's something that you don't remember how to do. That's it for our first look at CorelDRAW. We'll be moving on to our next application.